Hey there, if you're interested or looking into rebuilding your Kubota diesel engine, this video is right for you. So this is a V2203, but I've also rebuilt a V1902, and pretty much all the Kubota engines are plus or minus identical. Um, especially all the V series, the e including the D series, there are slight modifications and differences between motors. But one thing I highly suggest is getting a service manual as it'll give you all the specifications, for example, the head, cylinder head torques or the, uh, or for example, the valve clearances between the rocker arms. All that will be on the service manual, including step by step instructions on how to disassemble and take apart and service your engine. But this video is also a bit of a guidance and also give you some confidence if you're scared on doing it yourself. That way you can see how easy and quick it is to completely rebuild your the Kubota engine. So with this diesel engine, I got it off eBay for $1,400 including shipping. Uh, it had a blow-by issue, so it could be simply a valve seal problem. It could be a piston ring problem. So for this motor, I bought an overhaul kit. This includes new sleeves, new pistons, new rings, new valves, all the seals, uh, bearings for the crankcase, and just everything you, 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 that you need to replace, you can buy a kit for. This kit, I bought it for $450. And one great thing about these engines and there is that they're very, very popular in China and in other Asian countries. So because of that, there's a lot of parts already made for them and kits and everything else they need for very cheap. And actually, I bought this kit and it had, I had it delivered to me three days overseas from China. It's pretty surprising um, with, with how quickly this arrived. So with this model engine, it actually has a uh, bolt system that keeps these lower uh, injectors. So there's actually two parts on the injector. If this is a simple injector, it'll make more sense. But for notice, there's this bottom part and this top part. And you don't want to unscrew this bottom part. Um, and it's easy to do it with these two ends because you're able to just have one wrench here and one wrench on the top. But these middle ones are, obviously you can't put a wrench in them. So one thing I suggest to do is actually to have a screwdriver and use that to pretty much wedge it in. And once you take these two off, then when you're taking the middle ones off, it won't unscrew this one. On a V1 I know too and some other model engines, it really doesn't matter. Um, the timing isn't done uh, through these, but with this, uh, it's actually done through a shim on the bottom. But with this, the timing is actually done through the actually rotating this part so you actually want to keep this um, identical and when it in, in its position uh, that way it doesn't change the timing and you can just swap it back and off and on Alrighty, so that was really tough to get out, but uh, I got it out. Um, actual rubber gasket that's supposed to be on the uh, valve cover. Uh, managed to get stuck on the engine cylinder head itself, and as you see, it's very dirty. So um, Next, we got to take these four bolts out, and that holds the actual rocker arm assembly, and we're able to pull that out. Uh, next, there's also going to be these um, valve... Um, little sticks that extend out from the actual camshaft and you want to make sure that these sticks are you put them in their right position so what i suggest is getting like a piece of box or whatever cardboard and actually you know separating them out and actually you know marking them let's say you know this put starter on the front end and water pump on the back end or whatever however you want it um you know, and having them in order. You want to put them back exactly how, exactly the ones that they came from.
Alrighty, I got myself a piece of cardboard. I on one end wrote the pump, which is you know the water pump. The other end I wrote the flywheel, which is the flywheel. So I'm gonna have this in the background, and I'm gonna put all the parts, you know, in order. Um, the most important thing to keep in order is pretty much, like I said, these rods. Um, the actual um, push. Uh, I forgot the name for them, but they're they're like this little cylinder thing on the bottom uh, that connects uh, that touches the these rods to the actual camshaft and then uh the actual pistons um themselves and with the pistons you also want to keep the direction the same so uh with them uh they, typically there will be a marker on the actual connecting rods that shows um and when you go through again the manual specifications they'll actually tell you uh which side the markers are on um but yeah other than that i mean that's that should be the only thing that's important in um keeping everything identical okay uh, i'm gonna start taking off the hoses uh first one is off the injectors there we go i like to replace the hoses with new ones um this one looks like someone already changed them out but i'll just get a good one brand new one um this hose on the other hand looks like nobody has changed off the water pump and i'm probably gonna have to cut this one off they also use this weird style of hose clamps um hose clamps and i really hate them um they they always fall off and they're very flimsy and you know i just get a regular um uh, hose clamp and use that instead of these weird ones because like i said i don't like them and I hope you see why I don't like them. They're very annoying to take off. Luckily, I was able to slide this off. Sometimes, like I said, you'll have to cut it off. Um, I mean, I've even cut these off with wire cutters and just, you know, like I said, replaced the whole thing with a new hose. So yeah, um, that's all disconnected. Uh, next thing we got to do is take off the cylinder head bolts. On this one, I also have to take off the uh, heating things for the cylinders. On the V1902, it's on this side, so it doesn't really interfere. Um, you're able to just take off the cylinder head bolt, the cylinder head off without taking this one off, these off. But the problem with these is that the bolt is right underneath them. So it's also kind of nice because the other one was very difficult to access, and it did interfere with the injection lines if you want to take them off and um, the intake. So it's kind of nice that on this model they changed the design a little bit to make it easier to work on. I also like to put the bolts back um, where they're supposed to. Otherwise, you're going to lose them and it's you know such a small part that it's very frustrating if you lose them. And also when you have a bunch of different bolts and nuts and washers all mixed together, you're not, you don't really remember which one goes where. So try your best on putting them back. Now it's time to take all the cylinder head bolts off. I like to first un untighten them with my hand and I'll use the impact gun to finish it off. Not sure about a torque wrench. You're able to buy it pretty cheap from Harbor Freight and they work well. Um, but a lot of tools that you're missing, for example, the flywheel puller, um, if you know, I don't know, if you really want to, you could actually, uh, AutoZone, Auto Parts, all these stores, they have a loan a tool program. I like AutoZone the best. And pretty much you, you put in a deposit and they'll give you a tool that you can use. And as long as you return it, it's, they'll give you money back. So pretty much you can loan a tool completely for free. And it's so helpful, so nice. They have so many tools they can borrow, um, especially like flywheel pullers and stuff like that, you know, which typically is, you know, one, once in a time situation, you're not going to be using it often. Uh, but if you do want to, you can also, you know, buy one on on Amazon and whatever. They're pretty cheap, a lot of these things, a lot of these tools that they loan out. And it's also nice, you know, not to have to drive back and forth to a auto, auto parts store and loaning each time you need to use something. Like there's one place right here, you'll see there'll be like a little ledge with a gap between the cylinder head and the actual block. Here we go. That's it. 
All right, now that I got the cylinder head off, I'm gonna start with the uh, injector pump because this duct tape ain't working well, so. Um, if I'm correct, you have to pull it all the way over here. I'll show you why, but pretty much. There we go, that's easy. Um, you see this right here, this actually changes the, uh, the injectors and there's a little hole, so that's why you want this to be all the way over here on that side. Um, but yeah, I'll show you how to rebuild this in a separate video. Uh, for this video, I'm just going to be taking this all apart. Those shims are what allow you to do the timing. So also, when you're going to get this uh, motor head block resurfaced, you want to ask them and tell them not to surface their serial. Like tape it, say, you know, write them, tell them directly, but you really do not want them to surface this because then you have to re-shim this and readjust the timing, which is... Um, I mean, it's not problematic, it's just you want to avoid yourself. You, you just want to avoid doing work for yourself. And like I said, be very careful with these shims. You want to make sure they don't get damaged, they don't get bent. Kind of peel underneath with a knife. Special shim that's all the way in the bottom. Typically that one gets stuck. Seems like there's another shim. Typically there'll be a couple. And there's like three or four of them. Using a knife as a pry, letting it twist up. It's a little teensy tiny amount. Alrighty, that's the three of those shims. Um, pretty much with the injection pump, that's fine. Uh, you also have to get these studs out and these little two um, pins uh, so that when uh, I don't know. The, I don't know how they resurface it exactly, but they seem to want to have nothing on top. Uh, I guess we're measuring and stuff, but like I said, make sure when you give it this to the guy, you 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 tell him a lot to not surface this part. And typically they are, they're able to just have the uh, surfacing tool uh, cut this part. So if you don't have an impact gun, this uh, can be a little problematic, and I'll show you why in a second. So let's say we're going to be unscrewing this. As you see, it's just completely turning around. Uh, what you could do is you could get two bolts here. Screw them in onto the uh, on, on the flywheel and use a stick or something. And then you can use a stick to screw it out. But what I suggest doing is getting one of these things. They're a uh, impact gun, but they're uh, very high torque. And as you'll see, I won't even need to use this tool. I'll be able to just take it out by hand. As you see, so much more easier with this gun. I love the, this so much. Um, it's a very great investment. It's probably, I think it's like 150 bucks. I have actually a YouTube video on how you can make your own Dewalt batteries. Uh, but yeah, I mean, as you see, it's so easy. A lot easier than trying to do it by hand. Also, typically notice I break a lot less bolts with this. Um, the impact, I think, uh, helps a lot with the stresses on the actual bolt. Now, we got to pull the uh, entire crankshaft off. I know what we're gonna use is this unistrut. All right, I got my piece of unistrut. I had to drill a hole in the uh, middle because otherwise it wouldn't work. Um, so pretty much we're gonna have it bolt to these two holes right here. And we're gonna have this all thread going through the middle and pushing it through. So let's first set up the all thread. That way it'll be easy. And now we're going to start tightening it. There we go. It's that easy. Um, I know it looks really easy, but trust me, you cannot do it by hand. Um, at least I've tried and I couldn't. <laughs> um yeah i highly suggest just getting this tool and it'll make your job a million times easier trying to hammer it out pry it out you're you're going to damage something you know spend a little more time and do it right don't do it wrong all right now that we got that uh, this thing out the flywheel we could take this casing off and all it is is a couple bolts on the outside um the don't take the ones on the inside yet off that connects to the actual uh crankshaft 
um, you know, so that's a completely different assembly. So we'll just take the out outer bolts on that's holding this piece. I'm talking about and also around there is a tight fit so you gotta pull straight out so here's a pretty uh, great example of why it's very important to read the instructions and it will tell you exactly how to uh, take off the governor and all the controllers for the injection pump there's special springs and you know stuff that like you can't really see uh, I mean if you're just gonna pull it out and you might pull it out too hard and break something uh, so it's very important to, you know, watch the, um, well, uh, read the instruction manuals on that. But in the meantime, I'm going to show you what needs to be done. So we take the speed controller off. So we're going to use these pliers to simply grab the spring and unhook it. There we go. So the sp spring was hooked onto there. There's a little hole. Um, and you just pry it out. Be very careful with the spring. You don't want to lose it. It connects to this part right here. We're also going to remove that spring right there. Again, that's connected to here. Um, try to be careful. Again, you don't want to lose these springs. They're very important. But it's as simple as just unhooking it. There we go. Now this is somewhat free. There we go. Pretty simple. So with the pump, you technically don't need to take it off. You can just take it out, take out these big bolts. Um, all these small bolts uh, simply attach the uh, pump. Um, but the big bolts, so there's one over here that's not directly on the pump, but there's one over here, this one, this one. Uh, if I'm correct, they go all the way through um, the cover and actually connect to the crankcase. So, yep, so you can see they're the long bolts. And these are important to take out. So, I'm just recording. I uh, kind of did a step backwards. Um, you'll want to take this bolt off first before you take the flywheel off. Um, otherwise you're gonna have to do this and you don't want to really damage these bolts uh, It's better to use the flywheel and put put in pretty much two bolts uh, one hole in there one hole in there Pretty much use the same principle. So pretty much we need to unscrew this But as we're unscrewing this you'll see the flywheel actually churning uh, or the crank crankcase uh, Actually churning so that's why it's important to have this side secured by something so the nut will uh, the nut will break free Alrighty, we got the crankshaft nut off. Uh, now we got to pull the pulley off. Uh, again, you could rent these tools off AutoZone. Um, well, not rent, but loan. Uh, it's completely free. Don't try to, uh, to pry it with a screwdriver or something from the back of here because this is a very thin aluminum uh, casing and you can actually break it. So, you know, just go out, get it. Again, this thing's for free. You know, at any uh, mechanic store, and yeah, it's very useful. I bought uh, a set of three of them for like 25 bucks, so, you know, pretty useful. Next, we gotta get this little key out, and we just pry that out. Piece of screw. Wiggle it out. There we go. That's the key. Okay, so I want to show you the screws that you gotta take out. You gotta take one right here, one right there, one right there. 
there, there, two here on the bottom, here, 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 and then I already showed these two. Um, and then there's just a dowel pin right here that's holding this, you know, it's all straight. But yeah, you could just get a screwdriver. Um, there's a bit of a pry area right here that you can use to pry it out and then just wiggle it free. Having a rag or something underneath helps a lot because uh, this is one of the dirtiest motors I've worked with. There's even sludge here. Uh, it's definitely not taking a good care of this and, you know, doing oil changes and stuff. So uh, pretty important on why oil changes are important. Before you take any uh, gear out, any chain out, whatever engine you work on, you always want to make sure you know how to put it back together. So on these uh, gears, there's this idler gear, which controls everything. This is the crankcase gear. Uh, there's going to be a one dot onto this one. On here, there's uh, three dots, and here has two dots. Uh, what I suggest doing, um, you know, just so that you feel comfortable and so that you know, you know, that everything's going to fit. Rotate this around and try to get all of those, uh, you know, ones to align perfectly. Uh, they're not going to align the first turn. You're going to have to do many turns. Uh, but that's what I personally like to do to feel, you know, confident that they're, that I know everything is exactly how it's supposed to be. Um, and on this idler gear, it also has three, two, one um, gears. And, you know, when you put it back together, you can just put them into, put it into place and make sure all the gears align. And it's very easy. So this idler, so this gear for the camshaft, um, it doesn't have a pin. You just gotta take these two bolts off. Ow! Uh, but yeah, you just take these two bolts off from behind it. You even rotate it and just put a socket through here. But and now we can just pull the cam off. Um, all right. In order to take this uh, cam out, we need to take these. Um, I don't even know what they're called, but pretty much these little things out, and you just slide them up. And like I said, with the push rods, make sure they're in the exact same uh, position or same order that you put them in. Um, so say if you take this one out, put it back in. Uh, that's why I said get that cardboard box, you know, put it right down front, back, and take them out in the same way you pulled them out. Okay, so now, as you see, we can easily... Pull this out. Easy. So we got the cam out. We can start taking the rest of the stuff out. The idler gear. So even though I took this clips off, we don't actually need to. Um, that was a bit of an error on my part. So we can just put this straight back on. Um, as you're going to be servicing this governor thing. Uh, you can actually just take off the bolts on the back, and I suggest doing that instead because it is a bit of a complicating thing. And trying to reassemble it uh, probably is a pain. <laughs> uh, I definitely don't want to deal with that. So we're just going to unscrew the bolts on the back of here. It's one bolt back here. And I think that's it. Uh, oh, yeah, also there's one right here. Okay, so I've taken the two bolts off, one right there, one right there. Um, and then I took off these two bolts, big bolts. Oh, there's a washer right there. Um, yeah, so I took off that right there, that right there. And then I loosened up this bolt right here and also that bolt right there, as you see. So I loosened all it up and this entire thing that's holding this is all loose. Um, but what we need to do is start taking this part apart first. They also come with these little copper washers. Um, when you get your tool, uh, kit, um, uh, well, you know, the entire kit for the overhaul kit, uh, it's going to have these little washers and stuff. But if you're just going to do something temporarily, um, make sure to keep the washers. They're very important. You can also buy the washers. Um, they sell a little kit on Amazon. That has all uh, all types of copper washers, so pretty nice. All right, we got that removed. Now we can just pry this out. There we go. That's popped off. So this is the oil. That's the uh, fuel pump. 
Now we can uh, take this whole assembly out. So as we see, as we see, this uh, cam pretty much has a lobe over here, and that's what runs this, uh, pushes this little thing in here, which uh, is the fuel pump. Um, so we need to, and there's a bearing in here and all that, but we need to be able to push this whole thing out. Alrighty, so we're gonna start whacking it like this with a rubber hammer, and as we pull it out, this whole assembly is gonna come out, but you want to um, also unscrew this while you're whacking it out. This is the governor assembly. Now we just gotta take the actual cam out of the second bearing. And there's a, a bearing there, which is a bit of a pain to slide out. So what we're gonna do is get an, a stick, a rod, and again, use a rubber hammer to push it out carefully. Try to keep it as straight as possible. You don't want to damage this in any way. Try to create a soft area, because when it's gonna come out, unless you have someone to help, it's gonna drop out. That's the bearing I was talking about. It's a very tight fit on this side and that side. So that's why you gotta tap it out like that. It's like the oil pump out now. Uh, that just involves a bolt that holds the gear. All right, so I'm gonna pull this gear out now with the uh, puller. We're just gonna take the oil pump off now. Okay, so that's the oil pump. Um, Clean it up and do a visual inspection. Make sure there's no scratches. Uh, you know, it's it's all has good clearance. Honestly, with the oil pump, if you have a little bit to spare, I suggest just replacing it because they're very important. Um, obviously, if you don't have oil pressure, uh, all the bearings and stuff, they won't get enough oil and your engine will break. So pretty important, you know. Um, it's not that much more, but it's so much worth it. There we go, just little by little wiggle it out. And we got that out. That's the oil pump housing part of it. Okay, so um, next we need to uh, remove the pistons, the crank rods, and to do that we need to take off the oil pan. This oil pan is a little different from the V1902 and different uh, Kubota engines in terms that it's very wide. Uh, definitely a different design. I like the smaller one a lot more. I'm not sure why they went with this one. The one thing about the oil pan is that there's a special gasket underneath it, so you don't really want to damage that. Um, it's designed to be a reusable gasket. So when you're trying to pull this out, try to be very careful not to damage that. Um, I'm going to get a sharper wedge and use that instead of a blunt screwdriver. Also, um, I mean, I, th I think this is pretty obvious, but make sure you drain the oil before you do this. <laughs> Otherwise, it's going to be full of oil. Uh, the, the When they shipped the engine, they already drained it. So, I mean, I should be checking before I open this. Next, we're going to take out the oil pickup tube. So next, we're going to remove the crank rods, and all they are is two bolts on each one of them. Um, you can rotate also the uh, crank uh, shaft around so that you know it's easier to remove. So what I suggest doing is first uh, have it. Uh, um, probably like this or you know pretty much as close to you as possible take off those two bolts uh, on this end and this end and then rotate it 90 degrees that way you have clearance for the piston rod and you're able to put a stick do not use a metal or something but you put a stick through all the way to the piston as you see all the way back there and you uh, tap it out with a hammer and it'll pop out of the top end so pretty simple I'll show you the process of me doing it, um, obviously I don't have five hands, so uh, I'm gonna put the camera on the stand and... And when removing these, again, remember, like I said before, make sure you keep them. Uh, you put it back exactly the way you put, you take it out, pretty much. 
Now I got the piston out. We're gonna rotate. Now that I got the uh, connectors out, I'm gonna rotate the engine. That way I have access to it, access to the piston. So I'm just gonna use this stick to bump it out. Again, you wanna use something soft, you don't wanna use something hard. That's one piston out. And again, we're gonna see the piston and the way we take it out, the way we put it back. So again, this it was like this. We're gonna put it with its uh, uh, other parts and make sure everything's in order. Now, now that we got those two out, we're gonna rotate the crankshaft and do the other two. So just like before, I'm gonna rotate it till, it's, till I see, there we go. So I see the bolts, take them off, remember which one it came from, and the direction, rotate the crankshaft, 90 degrees, so you have clearance in the middle, and then tap it out. Alrighty, now that we have the pistons off, we can simply take off these three bolts and we can start work on taking the crankcase out. So now we're on this side again and we're gonna take off all these bolts. So now that we got all these bolts off, we can start working on this, prying it off and taking off the seal. There's actually a, uh, wedge part here on the actual thing which you're able to use to put in a screwdriver or something and try to wedge it up there we go that's all out now the actual uh crankshaft is all loose and we can actually uh as you see uh, we just got to get that gear off the front. There we go. Got it out. Ah, oh, that was a pain. Now we can just slide this all out. So I just like to hold the crankcase and then go from cylinder to cylinder and just carefully slide it out. Alrighty, so that's the entire engine block completely disassembled. Uh, it's ready for rehoning. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty easy. As you saw, the hardest part was taking this nut off and that ge uh, gear off, that gear right there. Um, but other than that, I mean, yeah, pretty happy, pretty easy. Um, gonna replace all the gaskets. Uh, one thing I suggest is before you take it to the mechanic is just take out all these seals, all these O-rings, all these gaskets. Uh, using one of these scrapers, just, you know, pull out all these gaskets and crud off um, the top. They're either way gonna re, uh, redo it. But the reason why I suggest doing all that is because they're gonna wash the engine block. And when they wash the engine block, uh, you don't want all this stuff off, uh, all this uh, paper and O-rings and stuff, because that'll prevent the, uh, uh, what they use is sodium hydroxide, a lie to clean the engine block. And it will, all this paper and O-rings and stuff, it'll prevent the uh, a lie from doing its thing. But yeah, um, let's do a, a visual inspection on this engine also and see what exactly the problem was and why it had, um, why it had blow by. So, checking the piston rings themselves, they also look in pretty okay condition. Um, however, this one actually had damage. Um, the, the ring itself was broken, so it's probably the reason why it had the blow by. Yeah, once I get that done, I'm gonna uh, return back and show you the process of putting it all together. In the meantime, though, I'm gonna clean up all this oils and, you know, uh, the two things, I'm gonna make two more videos. Uh, one video is on uh, uh, re-honing the valves on this, and also 
uh, repairing the injection pump. Um, it's pretty simple taking it apart. It's just uh, getting putting them back together is a bit of a pain But yeah, I'll do that next and Stay tuned. Hopefully you hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope it helped you somehow